So let's relate the average nearest neighbor index analysis and how we perform it to the statistic and the calculation itself. We're going to perform the calculation on this point data set, the trap locations of these biting fly traps on this study boundary. Let's look at the calculation using the equations provided on the pro.arcgis.com website. And the average nearest neighbor analysis is going to perform a ratio, which is going to be a comparison of the observed mean distance between our available points and an expected distance based on some knowledge about our sample size and the study area. So let's focus first on this calculation of the observed distance using our trap locations. Here in the calculation, D of I, I is going to be the individual points and trap sites, so each individual trap. N is going to be our total sample size, which is 42 traps. And we're going to measure the distance between each feature and the nearest neighbor of that feature. So as an example here, these two points would be the nearest neighbors of each other. Likewise, these two points. So we're overall, we're going to calculate the average distance of all those nearest neighbors. So we're going to calculate that for all of the individual points, and then we're going to divide that by the sample size, and that's going to give us our D observed. Now let's look at how we calculate the expected mean distance. To calculate the expectation, we're going to use this equation, where we're going to take 0.5 divided by the square root of n over a. And n, we saw just a moment ago, is going to be equal to the number of trap sites in this example. So again, 42. The a here stands for area, and that's going to be the area which is going to be one of two things, either a minimum enclosing rectangle or a bounding polygon, or in ArcGIS, a user can define a specific area. In QGIS, A is going to be equal to the bounding area of the trap sites. So remember, the bounding area is going to be a rectangle that captures the outermost north, south, east, and west points and creates a polygon. So for D sub E, we're going to calculate the area of this bounding box, and we're going to use the sample size, which again is the trap sites. So this analysis is going to give us an index. And that's going to tell us whether or not we have a random, a clustered, or a dispersed pattern. If the index is approximately 1, then we have a random pattern. If the average nearest neighbor index is less than 1, then we have clustering, meaning that DO is less than DE. And if that index is greater than 1, then our points are dispersed. And finally, we want to know if this is statistically significant. So we're going to perform a final calculation, which determines whether or not we're significant using a z-score. So for this final calculation, we're going to calculate a standard error, which is given by this equation of 0.26136 divided by the square root of n squared and area. And we saw how to calculate n and a previously. So if we divide our average observed and our average expected and divide by the standard error, we'll get a z-score. 